Okay, this says, mind altering drugs have been used throughout the history of America. While some remain socially acceptable, others are outlawed because of their toxic and intoxicating characteristics. These classifications have shifted at different times in history and will continue to change. The transformation of a particular drug from an acceptable indulgence to a bad habit or vice versa is closely tied to the intentions of those it's use, its use, endorsing its use, and their status in society. This exhibit explores some of the facts, factors that have shaped the changing definition of some of our most potent drugs from medical miracle to social menace. It's called Pick Your Poison, Intoxicating Pleasures and Medical Prescriptions. Okay, we are in the McClung Museum today, and they have an exhibit about mind-altering drugs and mind-altering some type of things like alcohol. And here's something about in colonial America, homebrewed beer was popular among farmers and the working class. So they made their own beer. And here's wine, of course. All different types of things they may have used. A moral and physical thermometer. Temperance. There's something called the Temperance Union. Here's a photograph of the German beer garden. Yes, and along with alcohol, tobacco can be described as a drug because it is very addictive. Nowadays, you have something like these vape pens, but in my day, it was the cigarette, and that's still, unfortunately, big today. Okay, it says in the 19th century, cannabis was available in patent medicines medicines, I can't talk today, sold at pharmacies visa via prescription. Okay, this little exhibit here is on marijuana. And as we know, most of the states are debating the use of marijuana now. Um, here's from the movie Reefer Madness. Women cry for it, men die for it, reefer madness. So they used to think, I guess, that it drove you crazy. Uh, no, <laughs> it does not. Uh, the Connoisseur's Handbook of Marijuana. There you go. And there's more exhibits here about marijuana. There's a pot is a reality kick. That is Allen Ginsberg, I believe. And Pancho Villa, and his, with his comrades on his ranch in Chihuahua, Mexico, apparently they smoked marijuana. Interesting, did not know that. And here's some tablets that contain cannabis. Here's a photograph of um, men smoking in a Chinese opium, opium den. And here's something about cocaine. In the late 19th century, physicians recommended cocaine for the treatment of hay fever, asthma, and melancholy as a cure for alcohol alcoholism an opiate addiction. Hmm. Interesting. <coughs> There's some men chewing cocoa leaves that they keep in a, let's see if I can pronounce this, chuspa bag in Peru. I know they grow a lot of cocoa leaves. And here's one of those bags. Interesting. I'm more interested in the bag than I am the cocoa leaves, I guess. And this shows some of the different things that cocaine was used in, I guess. Um, yep, here you go. 
This has menthol, borax, and cocaine in it. Sorry, it's not focusing very well. Mariana wine. Also, something that was used by, I guess, the Pope at one time. His Holiness the Pope writes that he has fully appreciated the benefit effects of this tonic wine. And I would guess it had cocaine in it. And of course, everybody knows the story that Coca-Cola at one time had cocaine in it. This is Coca-Cola Bottling Company in the 1890s. The Coca Wine Vin Mariana was overtaken in popularity by Coca-Cola. Pharmacist John Pemberton created the drink as a non-alcoholic alternative to his Peruvian wine coca after prohib prohibition was adopted in, in Atlanta in 1886. By the 1890s, the drink became had become popular, so popular that numerous imitations with those names, alluding to their coca content, such as Coke, Cafe Cola, and Coast Cola, flooded the market. Here's a bottle from the Coca-Cola Company. Okay, in this section we have a little bit more stronger drugs of the opium type. Photo of something called the Queen of Chinatown. I'm pretty sure they're talking about smoking opium in this one. This rather interesting exhibit shows the good uses and the bad uses of these drugs. I want to say that I in no way support the use of any of these drugs, and I'm more for the natural hide that you get from life. Um, just wanted to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this exhibit. They have a lot of different exhibits at this museum, and this is one of the more interesting ones. Thank you.